It's September 24th, 2019, and this is episode three of Plane Savers Down Under. We're at the Haas Museum, the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society, based at Illawarra Airport, about 120k south of Sydney, just to the south of the city of Wollongong. This is part one. Part two will follow shortly as I ran out of storage in my phone and I've had to split this into two presentations. Part two contains a very pleasant surprise when we were granted access to a very well-known and well-respected restoration lady here at Haas. I'll leave that for you to be surprised by. This is the entry into Haas before we go out into the hangars. The great display of engines that I'll walk around in a minute. We have a Cobra gunship representative of the fact that these work with Australian troops in Vietnam. It's not an aircraft that served in Australia. Yeah, Rolls-Royce Dart engine, Mosquito undercarriage, Armstrong Sidley double member out of the uh, Ferry Gannet, Lycoming, Little Blackburn Tomtit. The same, that's the Tirana target ta drone. There's a Honeywell APU. Rolls Royce Avon that powered the Sabre in the Canberra. A centrifugal engine, the de Havilland Goblin, which we saw at Fighter World. That will give you an idea of the difference between the two technologies. The Avon technology has continued on while the centrifugal has ceased. Rolls-Royce Neen and again the Merlin. Here is the Westinghouse J34. That was the auxiliary engine in the Neptune. Here we are inside the Haas hangar. Over there is the F-111. Over there is the Sea Fury. And I'll tell you in the story about that. In the background there is a vampire. And over the top of this is the most beautiful airliner ever created, the Lockheed Constellation. These aircraft are all airworthy, though the F-111 will never fly again. Here's the tracker, and I'll, again, I'll fill you in on that. And in the background is the Mirage 3, and one of the Neptunes, and out the door a C-47 or a DC-3, the first airliner flown by TAA. This tracker used to be based at the Qantas Training School, it is now down here at Haas and being restored, and hopefully, it even though there's still a fair bit to do, down the future it will be able to fly. And this is a French Neptune. Um, I'm not sure what model it is. Um, my my guide Alistair will probably tell me. It's a. It's the final model. The, oh, it's the last model of the yeah, Neptune, yeah. and uh, we do have an Australian one outside. I think it is in the Dallas. But, yes. Yep. But this is a French one, and uh, both of them are airworthy. Oh, there you go. It's a PTV7. And here's that beautiful lady, the Mirage 3 O. 
not the 3E, the 3O. Slightly different from the E. This was referred to as the best seat in the house. You couldn't get a better view. And when I was in the Air Force Cadets, if we scored a flight, especially in a Neptune, we hoped this was the seat we'd get. Oh, OK. That's uh, the uh, Wirraway. Now, this is a CAC Wirraway. The Australian development of the Harvard. Uh, this one's being restored. Um, you can see right through into the guts of this one, which is great. Gives you a really good idea of the fuselage structure. This wear away, or well, the wear away, was essentially a glorified trainer, but in the rush to defend Australia, they were deployed in New Guinea with a machine gun and one of them has actually shot down a Japanese aircraft in New Guinea. Um, And the thing that always amazes me on aircraft, that little gap of engine only about two foot deep and about three and a half feet wide, powers it all. Here is the Australian Drover again, it, um, very similar to the previous one I showed you up in Caboolture. This is not a... Um, Flying Doctor one like that one is a passenger one, so a slightly different um, internal layout. Yeah, there's a 1950 original airliner. <laughs> yeah, as Alistair just said, an original 1950s style airliner. Same interior, same cockpit, nothing's changed. <laughs> And it's got air conditioning. <laughs> see a little black unit there with the cork in it. <laughs> oh, you see it. Love the air conditioning. We'll show you that. That is the air conditioning unit with the cork. You pull that out and you get fresh air straight from the outside. <laughs> yeah. Now here's Mikey. This is something that'll keep you happy. Here's a Douglas DC-3, the, the Horden, in Australia. It's a very famous aircraft. This was the first aircraft that flew for TAA back in 19... Um, what? 46. There's the hamburger door. Beautiful polish, it's fully restored. Flies, flies regularly. Uh, there's the 1830s. Um, She's well protected, 
tidied up. But a very historically significant aircraft in Australia. Started off as a C-47 and then converted to a DC-3. And now, in all its glory, our DC-3. Now here's something very rare. This is the only civilian registered Orion. This is the APC Orion flown by the RWF and now recently retired to be replaced by the P-8 Poseidon. Now here's a contest for you. Uh, see if you can count how many aerials are underneath the belly of this uh, Orion. Down the back however one of those bulges is a camera and not an aerial. You can also see where the sonar boys are ejected. And out the back is the magnetic anomaly detector or mad boom. There's the rest area down here and obviously the little boys room or girls these days. There's the galley and this is a rare treat to actually get inside an Orion that was until recently fully operational. These are two types of uh, sonar boy. They rotate, the veins will rotate on this one and uh, slow its uh, drop. This one will oh. shoot, slow it down, mm -hmm. reduce the impact into the water. Um, you've got a load of sonar boys under the floor here, preloaded. Mm -hmm. They can shoot them out. Oh, you've okay. also got these uh, oh. launching units here, and uh, one of them for housekeeping duties. <laughs> You've got a vacuum cleaner yep. connection there. <laughs> These seats are, are in the lockdown position for takeoff facing rearward for safety. Once in flight, they rotate round to face their workstations. At each of these workstations, Haas has put a description of each role or the role at each one of the workstations. All of the work done here um, by the analysts is then sent off to the taco which we'll see in a little while for him to make a decision. Here on the left we have the taco's position. As I said the data is forwarded to him from the analyst down the back and it's his responsibility to make a decision on the action that they will take and then he will if they decide to there's a sonar boys or a torpedo to be launched he will then direct the captain on how to conduct the intercept on the right is the navigator's position Up here obviously is the cockpit, uh, there is space here for an observer because these aircraft patrol the southern oceans and um, on the right here is the uh, flight engineers panel. Here is a great view of those big paddle propellers common to the Electra and the early model of Hercules powered by the Allison turboprops. Now here is a true brute of an aeroplane. 
the fastest pitch in engine plane, the Hawker Sea Fury. As I said to you before when I was talking about the tracker Haas, because of its reputation and the work they do in restoration of aircraft, has taken over responsibility of the Royal Australian Navy's historic flight of airworthy aircraft. So this aircraft is being worked on, a Sea Venom, Tracker, C-47, Wessex, all of those have been taken over by Haas to be maintained in airworthy condition, which is a great honour for Haas and an even better reason for you to come and visit down here. This is what you call one hell of an engine. Power is the same as the Neptune, but uh, different configuration. Now that's a fuel. This one's fuel injected. And Curtis Wright, 3350. That's Alistair filling me in because I don't know it all. Uh, the Neptune's in engines are carburetted. Are carburetted so, but if you look at it. Look at the size of that engine, incredible. Mm -hmm. But in relation to the total size of the aircraft, it shows you how efficient the modern engine became. Very complicated and put out an incredible amount of power. Oh, we are in the Constellation. That's the crew rest area. Not quite as salubrious as the ones today. You're not the best of it, mate. <laughs> Here's your navigator station. You can see the altimeter, radio compass, weather radar, marine system, all that. Over here is all the buttons and everything of the flight engineer station. Yep, made sure these cyclones kept turning because they had a bad habit of not turning. And it wasn't unusual to have to fly, oh, Qantas, had to fly engines to various parts of the world to keep these constellations flying. Here's the latest in the 50s navigation aids. A clear panel set into the roof with uh, the degrees marked on it. This is used by the navigator for with a sextant to take um, positions during the day and for celestial navigation at night. The sun off the horizon. And all that information, the elevation of the sun, the time. And here are two 1950s technology vampire fighters used by the RAAF. The first one we see with the day glow nose um, is in the colours of the Telstar aerobatic team. It is most likely this aircraft won't fly and will, will remain static and the one in the behind it is being restored to flight and as you'll see the engine has been removed. The rest of the structure is in good nick and hopefully in not too distant future this aircraft will be in the skies. In America, they decided to give it a name, so they called it the Aardvark. You remember? We call them the pig, America calls them the Aardvark. Why is it the pig? Because it's down amongst the weeds. 
Otherwise, they ha this time I can get inside the cockpit for you. Um, and as you're aware, the F-111 is very unique in that it has a capsule that actually takes the crew out, as you'll see here. And there are blasting strips around that blast it off and it can fly. That's right, see that strip up through past the nav light over the top? And this whole leading edge or uh, early part of the wing and then the canopy, you can see it, there's the blasting strip right around here, then up over the top. And that means the whole cockpit comes off comes off by with a parachute and the crew just descend gently into the water. The big green item at the rear there under the wing with the fins is a fuel tank to increase the already significant range of the F-111. In front of those are two racks. One is the green one for the fuel tank and the black one is for missiles. These um, racks rotate or with the wing as the wing swivels to keep the uh, miss missiles or the tanks pointing forward. This is the end of part one. Hope you're enjoying your visit to Haas. See you soon in part two.